If you're new to Unity, there's a chance that you're already familiar with creating 3D games like first-person shooter or third-person shooters. However, if you're planning on creating 2D games like top-down 2D games, then the case would be different especially about animating your characters. In this tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how you can create top-down 2D character movement using Unity Animator controller and one little script. So open up your Unity, make sure its template is set to 2D and let's begin. Before we proceed, we need to download the 2D assets that we're going to use for this tutorial. However, if you have your own assets like 2D characters and platforms, then feel free to skip this step. Okay, so we're here in the asset store, right over here in the search, type 2D tiny RPG. You can just scroll down and look for the tiny RPG forest. You can select that and click download. Once the download is finished, just click import. That should give you a window where you can select which asset should be imported. And since I already have it in my project, I can just close this. But to you, click import, especially if you don't have it in your project. Once the asset is imported, you can just start designing your scene using the tile sets inside the environment folder. You can also find sprites there like trees, bush, and rocks. Or if you want, you can use Photoshop to create a platform like what I did in this sprite. If you want to use this sprite as well, you can download it. I'll put the link in the description. The next thing that we're going to do, of course, is to bring in our player. To do that, go to Tiny RPG Forest folder, then select Artwork, then Sprites. Inside the Sprites folder, select the Hero folder. Notice what's inside the Hero folder. There you will see all the action sprites for the player, such as attack, idle, and walk. First, let's just open the idle folder. Inside the folder, you will see another three different folders for the different directions our player can be facing. Front, back, and sides. We're going to select the hero idle front sprite and drag it in our scene. If somehow you encounter this type of error where you can see the hero sprite after you drag it into your hierarchy, just make sure that your background or any environment sprites have an order in layer value of negative one. Nice, now let's rename it from hero whatever to player because that name is horribly hard to read. Awesome, now let's make our hero move around. Let's create a new script. Select the player, go to the inspector, click add component, and right over here in the search, just type player movement without a space. Select new script and click create and add. That should create a C-sharp script right over here. Now let's open that with our Visual Studio. So here in our script, the first thing we're going to do is to create a set of variables. So first type in private, float, movement, speed, and just give it a value of float one. Next, type private, vector two, and give it a name of movement. And the last one should be private, rigid body 2D, and give it a name of rigid body. Awesome, now the next thing that we're going to do is to apply a rigid body component into our rigid body 2D variable. To do that, we'll be using the get component function over here in the start function. Now what the code above does is it initializes the rigid body variable as soon as we start our game. Because of that, we can access the physics to control our player. If you don't want to use get component, you can just manually attach the rigid body into the variable using the inspector. But since our variable is set to private, we won't see this variable in our inspector. I just like doing this because I'm really lazy. Now, if you look at our code, you will see that there is an update function below. If we use the update function, we can control the cart in every frame possible. However, update function can be unreliable due to its constantly changing frame rate, and we don't want that for our player, but instead we're going to use the fixed update function. The reason why we're doing it like this is because we have to make sure that there won't be any delays to our player movement. Fixed update works exactly the same as the update function. The only difference is update function is depending on the frame rate. So for example, the frame rate goes down to 10 frames per second. Expect the player to have a little choppiness to its animation. Fixed update function, however, is by default called 50 frames per second, which are recommended especially if you're working with physics. However, we still need the update function, but we will be using the update function just for the input and animations, so you can just bring it back right above the fixed update. Let's get our input values first. Right over here in the update function, use the movement variable and give its x a value from our horizontal axis using the get axis raw function. Then do the same thing for the y. Nice, now we have the value of our inputs. We can now use these values to control the position of our player. To do that, we'll have to use our rigid body. 
Swipe over here in the fixed update function, type in widget body and use the move position function and pass the value of widget body's current position plus movement, multiply it by movement speed and fixed delta time. And there you have it. Save the script and head back to Unity. Once the script is updated, select the player and add a rigid body component to it. Then make sure that the gravity scale is set to zero and its freeze rotation Z is checked. Now if we're on the game, we should be able to move around like so. Next is player animation. To start animating your character, go to window tab, select animation, and select animation. You may also just press Ctrl 6 for a shortcut if you're using Windows. Now select your player transform, go to your animation window and click create. You can create a new folder and name it animation. And inside the animation folder, name your animation idle.anim. Next, go back to your hero folder that contains all the idle sprites and drag the hero idle front sprite in the animation window. Next, create a new animation clip by clicking the drop down with the name of your current animation and click create new clip. Name your new animation clip walk underscore up and then go to the hero walk back folder and drag all the sprites into the animation window. To select multiple sprites, simply click the first sprite, hold the shift key, and then click the last sprite. If you try to play the animation, you will see that the animation is playing very fast. To fix that, just select all the animation and drag this little bar to the right like so. We'll set it to play for 30 frames. Now if you play it, the animation moves much better. Now we'll do the same process for the walk down and walk side animation clips. You may notice that we don't have sprites or animation for walk left. Now there are many ways to solve this issue. The first is to use Photoshop and just manually flip all the sprites so it will face the left horizon. But that just takes a lot of time so we'll just use the scripting instead. We'll do that later. For now let's continue with our player animator controller. After we've created all the animations, our player should have new component and that is the animation. If you go to the window tab, then animation, and animator, you will see something like this. As you can see, there is our idle animation, walk up, walk down, and walk side animation. Think of this as a playlist of animations, but in order for us to play them, we need to create a certain rule for each animation. For example, if the player is not pressing any keys, then play the idle animation. If the player is pressing the arrow keys, then play the walking animation. In order for us to do that, we need to create parameters. Go to the top left corner of the animator window and click parameters. Right beside the search bar, there is a plus button. Press that and select float. Let's name it horizontal. Again, do the same thing. Create a new parameter and select float and name it vertical this time. Next, delete all the animations in the animator except the idle and the walk side animation. Now that we have the parameters ready, we can now use them to control a blend tree. Blend trees are used to smoothly transition from one animation state to another. To create a new blend tree, go to your animator window, hit right click, select create state, and select from new blend tree. Next, select the blend tree that you just created, go to the inspector, and rename it to vertical. Next, double click the blend tree and select the node blend tree. Go to the inspector, make sure that the parameter being used is vertical. Then add a new motion field. Next, find your walk down animation and drag it to the motion field. Create another motion field, but this time for walk up animation. Now let's uncheck the automate threshold in the inspector and modify the threshold of our animation for walk up animation. For walk up animation, the threshold would be 1, and the threshold for the walk down animation would be negative 1. We're doing this because we're following the values that are given by our vertical input. We actually forget a parameter, so right over here, click the plus button once again, select float, and name the parameter speed. Now, we're going to create a transition between our animations, so go ahead and right click the idle animation and select make transition. 
this should give you an arrow which you can point to another node and this time we're going to select vertical blend tree node so click that we're going to do this as well to our vertical blend tree and walk side animation hit right click select make transition and choose the other animation until we create something like this once you have added transitions, let's start giving them instruction when they should transition from one animation to another. To do that, select the transition from idle to vertical. In the inspector, make sure that has exit time is unchecked. And inside the settings, the transition duration should be set to zero. Next, in the condition section, click the plus button and select speed. And then choose greater than the value of 0.01. Do the same thing for the transition from vertical to idle. In the inspector, make sure that has exit time is unchecked. And inside the settings, transition duration should be set to zero. In the condition section, click the plus button and select speed and then choose less than the value of 0.01. Next, for the idle to walk side animation, in the inspector, make sure that has exit time is unchecked and inside the settings, the transition duration should be set to zero. In the condition section, click the plus button and select horizontal and then choose greater than the value of 0.01. Notice that we're changing the parameters depending on the animation. And lastly, walk side animation to idle transition. In the inspector, make sure that the has exit time is unchecked and inside the settings, the transition duration should be set to zero. In the condition section, click the plus button and select horizontal and then choose less than the value of 0.01. And there you have it. Now we have set up our animator controller. Let's use this controller in our player movement script. Let's create the private variable, then use animator component and name it anim. Next, inside the start function, use the get component function to assign the animator of our player into our anim variable. Next, create a private float variable and we'll name it horizontal and give it a value of zero. Then we'll just duplicate this and change its variable name to vertical. Let's just remove the comments, we don't really need this actually. Now inside our update function, let's give our horizontal variable a value that depends on the following condition. If x from movement is greater than 0.01, then we'll give its own value to our horizontal variable. Otherwise, we'll check it again if the x from movement variable is less than negative 0.01. If it's true, then give our horizontal variable a value of 1. If not, then give it a value of 0. Now we'll do the same for our vertical variable, but instead of using x, use y. Alright, now that we have the value that we're going to use for our animator, let's create a condition for our walk side animation because like I said before, we don't have an animation for walk left so we'll have to flip our character. Type if movement.x is less than negative 0.01. If it's true, then we'll set our player local scale to a new vector 3 with a value of negative 1 in x axis. This will flip our player horizontally. Now the last thing we're going to do is to make sure that we can flip it back so we'll add an else statement that set our local scale back to its original value. That should work but we're not done yet. Let's use our animator now. Right below type anim.setFloat and set the horizontal value to horizontal. Next, just copy the same line and change the string from horizontal to vertical. Change the variable as well to vertical. Lastly, use anim the set float again and set the value of speed to vertical. Actually, this is wrong. The vertical should have a value from movement.y and speed should have a value from vertical. Let's also rename it to speed. Sorry about that. All right, if we save our script and go back to Unity, we should be able to control our player. And there you have it. Now you have a player movement for your top-down 2D games. I'm sure there are other ways that you can do to create a top-down player movement. And I think this one is just the basic of how to do it without writing too much code. If you have any other ways to create player movement, feel free to share it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. And I will see you all in the next video.